Okay, good evening, space fans. There you have it. The launch of NASA's Artemis One mission just happened 10 minutes ago. Uh, it's been a tense night. You know, there were a few setbacks, including a, uh, a leak on a replenishment valve of the liquid hydrogen system, followed by an outage of one of the U.S. Space Force's uh, radar installations on the Eastern Range. However, uh, with barely any time remaining, all mission controllers said, uh, there go for launch. Everybody packed up and ran out here as quickly as we can with only about five minutes left on the countdown. And uh, we saw Artemis 1 blast off into the night sky. It was incredible to watch. What an amazingly powerful rocket standing 322 feet tall. Uh, lit up the entire, entire field here. The applause in the crowd was incredible. Everybody's been waiting all Good morning, space fans. It looks like we have some phrasing from Brett on his end. There are a lot of people uh, down at Kennedy Space Center working to use the internet right now, um, but we are so thrilled that it sounded like a fantastic launch and would love to know in the comments if any of you were watching live and how it looked on your end while we wait to get Brett back. Um, the mission will take about 25 days. We'll see it splash down into the Pacific Ocean on December 11th, maybe December 12th, um, after releasing a series of CubeSats to space, and of course, testing uh, the All right, it looks like we are having some internet issues. Tarek, you want to jump in and tell us how you, the launch was from your end? Yes, it will. Uh, I guess uh, all cards on the table, I do owe the entire space.com staff, uh, including you, Vanessa, some Girl Scout cookies. We did lose <laughs> Brett. They were, they were, <laughs> that was the bet. I really did not think this was going to happen today. It was amazing to watch on the screen. It sounds like it was even more amazing. Uh, to see in person with Brett. There were 15,000 people uh, estimated to be at the Kennedy Space Center alone. Most likely, you know, hundreds of thousands more watching uh, along uh, the space coast um, uh, of Florida uh, and, and along the, the seaboard there. This rocket was supposed to be visible all the way up to Georgia uh, for, the, for the folks, depending, of course, on the, on the, on the, uh, uh, the conditions. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, just a bit more... Um, uh, uh, more up front, this was a big win for NASA. It's been 18 years of development since 2004 when NASA first announced plans for a big rocket to go to the moon. That was a different program, the Constellation program, of course, uh, at that time that was canceled during the Obama administration uh, and the uh, Ar Artemis program uh, really took to the fore uh, in the, the last, uh, in the Trump administration. And now, uh, it, you know, three, three presidents later, uh, and uh, uh, just billions of dollars later spent, uh, this rocket is in uh, in space on its way to the moon. Artemis 1 was supposed to launch in 2017. It's been uh, five years overdue. Uh, it, has, it has come in over budget, but it seems like despite a hurricane, uh, despite a radar problem, and despite uh, uh, those pesky hydrogen leaks, they were able to get off the ground. And now the big test awaits trying to get to the moon. Absolutely. Um, and it looks like we had a few people that were watching uh, live from their homes, some people from Southeast England, all over the world, um, and a few from Florida. So oh. <laughs> continuing on the East Coast, they're up with us, Tarek. So good to see that there's so many space fans joining us tonight. Yeah, yeah. So so, so the, the, the work doesn't stop here. And so right, while, while getting the rocket off the ground was the first step. There's many more things that have to come uh, uh, that, that are going to be coming in the next few hours that are all just as critical. In about six hours, the Orion spacecraft is expected to fire its uh, uh, not the Orion spacecraft, the Centaur upper stage carrying Orion will fire its engine uh, to push the spacecraft out of Earth orbit on its way to the moon. Uh, Brett mentioned earlier that it will drop about 10 CubeSats uh, over the ensuing hours uh, that will follow it on the way to the moon. Some will enter lunar orbit one is a solar sail that's going to go to an asteroid and uh and so that's those are all kind of extra uh science missions that are on board uh orion at about you know for folks on the east coast about 10 o'clock 10 30 in the morning 
Orion's supposed to turn its cameras back at Earth and take a kind of a parting a parting look at our planet as it uh, as it uh, heads on its on its way. We're looking forward to that because NASA is going to broadcast all of that live as well as that burn at about eight o'clock eight eight thirty. Uh, Eastern time. It's probably going to be a bit later than that, actually, now that I think about it, because they did launch about uh, 45 minutes later than planned. So that that schedule, as we mentioned in our earlier broadcast, will be a bit fluid. Uh, I'll have to uh, check in with Brett once he gets the final schedule from NASA to see what that's going to what that's going to look like. You can look for a uh, a post launch briefing from NASA on the NASA TV channel in about an hour, hour and a half after liftoff. They've got a lot to celebrate now, especially face, uh, given the challenges that they had. Uh, but uh, but a lot of a lot of great stuff uh, to, to awaits. It seems like uh, just getting it off the off the ground was the first uh, the first step. I'm looking at this, the NASA TV feed right now, and uh, Charlie Blackwell Thompson, NASA's first female launch director for the Artemis program, uh, she is actually addressing the launch team right now, congratulating everyone. Everyone seems to be just ecstatic uh, over there, especially given how late it is at night. So uh, definitely uh, uh, some celebrations going around. You can They're gonna have some big parties this morning in Florida. Absolutely. I think we'll ha be having some big parties all over the world today um, with that incredible launch. Um, yeah. And I just want to thank everyone for staying up with us all night to watch the launch. Tarek, is there anything uh, that our viewers can expect from space.com as far as any updates off of this? Well, you know, it's been a slog to get here just to, to, to kind of figure out what's going on on the, on the NASA front uh, as they had to, you know, get through the hurricane issues, get through these delays that we saw tonight. Uh, and then, as Brett mentioned, uh, have just a very little warning for when they pick that new time. But when it was time to go, clearly it was time to go. Uh, we will be uh, covering the mission live uh, uh, until it gets to, uh, back to Earth. So you can expect those updates that I mentioned earlier from the press conference. Uh, Brett will, you know, has a, 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 a still <laughs> an even longer day ahead of him as he as he works through all of that. Uh, there is a lot of science on this mission too, and we'll be talking a lot about that in the days to come. Uh, there, uh, NASA is testing the Artemis uh, spacesuits. Uh, there's a, a mannequin in there called Campos that is that is doing that. How? What was the effect of this launch on a on an astronaut's body? The stresses, the vibrations, uh, the temperatures, and everything. How did the suit work uh, for the uh, for the mannequin itself? There's two uh, kind of humanoid torsos on on uh, Orion as well to measure the radiation environment. Orion is uh, is going to be going further than any spacecraft uh, that can carry a crew ever. Is a, a, a record set during the Apollo era in 19 in the 1970s or pardon me on Apollo 13 uh, during the 1970s and uh, and Orion's going to surpass that with this just really long orbit uh, to 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 um, loop around the moon. It is it is going to it's a very long orbit. It's going to circle maybe once, maybe one and a half times uh, during this uh, this next month that it's going to be in transit. And uh, and during that time, there's a, a lot of bio biological experiments. Um, there's some stem. There's some moon seeds flying on this uh, on this. And there's some some plush toys that we hope to see uh, later. A Snoopy, uh, a Shaun the Sheep, just to kind of get uh, kids and students excited uh, for that too. Uh, so those are all things that we we're looking forward to seeing. Personally, me, there are cameras on Orion's uh, round solar arrays uh, that uh, should give us basically an epic selfie from the moon uh, with uh, uh, with the uh, Orion in the in the foreground. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I hope it it comes out. But of course, Vanessa, I'm getting ahead of ourselves. They have to get to the moon first. So, Absolutely. so you know, we it's gonna be it's gonna be a bit of a challenge to see you know what's what's gonna happen. This is the test run. After this flight, if it goes well. NASA wants to put astronauts on this spacecraft and launch them to the moon in, uh, in 2024. So uh, there's a lot riding on it, uh, but definitely it seems like they have a lot of success to celebrate right now. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure that everyone is incredibly excited. We are keeping our fingers crossed for the Artemis 1 launch because we would love to see um, some people get back on the moon. And that's yeah. fine. Thank you so much, Tarek. Well, thank you, Vanessa. And thank you to, to uh, all you space fans out there. And to Brett, you know, uh, it's been a... 20 hour day for Brett, uh, just, just as it has been for the, the NASA teams. Uh, just an amazing job by everyone uh, to, to try to bring this, uh, this show to you all. And we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed for this mission to see how it goes and, and hopefully uh, get those amazing views and the latest news to you all. Fantastic. Well, from all of us here at space.com, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you. Keep looking up. <laughs>